Today's video is another behind the scenes look at a test shoot here at the smashcake.com. Hey, it's good to see you again. My name is Daniel Troutman with thesmashcake.com, your online resource for all things Smashcake. And today we're doing a test shoot because we're bringing in a new backdrop. We're testing out a new cake vendor and we're bringing in some new photography gear. So we decided to go ahead and bring in what I call a stunt baby or, you know, model to go ahead and help us work through all of the new stuff just in case things don't go according to plan. Which brings me to a point where I will drag out my soapbox and I will stand up on it and I will shout from the mountaintops, you guys should never be testing any sort of new backdrops, new sets, new photography equipment. Never, ever, ever test that on a paying client because it just isn't fair to your client. Now, why is that not fair? Well, let's be real honest. Today's shoot, we had some major issues and we had a ton of them, all right? And had that been a paying client, well, it possibly could have hurt my studio's reputation in my small market because let's be real, people talk. And if they're gonna talk, well, you better damn well give them something good to talk about. And that's why I never, ever practice on a paying client. Now let's go ahead and get started with today's behind the scenes look at how we built a honeybee set with a brand new backdrop from Intuition Backdrops. Now I am in no way, shape or form affiliated with Intuition Backgrounds. I don't receive any sort of commission. I don't get anything from you know sending you guys over there, except the peace of mind and knowing that anything you buy from Intuition Backgrounds is gonna be solid, it's gonna be useful and it's gonna make you money. Now, one of the reasons I really love Intuition Backgrounds is that when they take a picture for their background, so here's how they do it. They go ahead and they build these cute little smash cake sets. They take a high quality photo of it, and then they go ahead and when they take the picture, they leave a little bit of the floor at the bottom, which is usually white seamless. And the cool part about that is that you can then take your white seamless, match it right up to the bottom, and it looks as if the set is real. It looks as if you spent hours building that smash cake set, when in reality, all you did was drop a background, roll out some seamless, and boom, you've got a set. Now the real cherry on top of the backdrop Sunday is the fact that these backdrops will save you money and they will save you time. Now the money comes from when you don't have to buy all the props that exist in that backdrop. If you look back there, there's all sorts of beautiful props and you did not have to spend dime one on those things. That's somebody else's problem. And number two, speaking of problems, look at that balloon garland back there. Now, if you've ever built one, you know you're into it for at least an hour, if not two. And in that two hour period, what could you be doing that, other than building that garland? You could be photographing another client and making more money. Or you should be at home having dinner with your family. I would much rather be at the dinner table with my kids than blowing up a damn balloon garland till 9 p.m. at night. And to be real with you guys, as soon as my studio got busy, the first thing that went by the wayside was family time. So if you wanna go ahead and protect that, you gotta create a more efficient workflow. And part of that efficiency is buying a backdrop that's, well, pretty much good to go, an entire set in one backdrop. So definitely check out these Intuition backdrops. They save you time, they save you money, and they buy back some very precious moments with your kids. Now, as far as the flooring goes, we've already kind of covered that. Of course, I'm using white seamless in order to match, but when you do use a scenic like this where they've taken a picture from a certain height, there are some issues that could arise with perspective. From time to time, uh, the horizon in the backdrop just won't look real. Something will look off to your eye, and it's really the perspective. It just looks wrong. And so what you have to do is sometimes curl the backdrop under and then run your seamless under that and just play with the height up and down of that backdrop until it looks good to your eye. And that's the best advice I can give you is just raise and lower it until it looks good to you. Season to taste. So one of the wonderful things about today's backdrop is that all of the props already exist inside the backdrop. And that's great because it saves you time and money, but it doesn't help when you want to create an image that is like super three dimensional. What you need to do there is do what they do in Broadway plays and create layers. So you have your background, your foreground, your midground, and your actors will all exist inside the layers, making your mind really believe that what they're looking at is actual reality. And that's kind of what you want to do with Smash Cake Photography sets. Now to do that, we went ahead and brought in some of our old favorite props. We brought in some wooden blocks that we talked about in one of our prop videos. We brought in some greenery, which is just kind of there to match the greenery that's in the background and to help hide the seam that exists between the floor and the background. 
We brought in some balloons again to kind of match what's already in the background and to create those layers and to give the child something to play with. And then we went ahead and found some flower confetti that we could kind of throw on the floor to match the flowers in the back of the backdrop with the intent of, of course, uh, making the whole thing look as if the child is in the room with all of those other props, thereby making the whole set just seem a heck of a lot more real. Now, remember when I told you at the beginning of the video, this is a test shoot, and one of the things that we were testing today are these beautiful little snap together honeycombs. These are plastic, they are easy clean, and they snap together in about a million different formations. Now, the cool part about these is that they mimic what's already in the set, and we can go ahead and put them in the set, create that extra layer, and inside there are spaces there for us to hide little flowers, to nestle cupcakes in there, and to really kind of just make the set pop a little bit more. So I was absolutely thrilled to see these up on Amazon.com, and I couldn't wait to bring them into my studio and try them specifically for today's Honeybee set. Now, while we're on the subject of Amazon.com, let's go ahead and talk about the wardrobe. Today, we were trying to match the yellow that exists in the backdrop. So we went ahead, we went on Amazon.com and we started searching for outfits that would match. Now, the trick is you're gonna wanna buy four or five different outfits because, well, you just don't know what color you're actually gonna get until the day it actually arrives. What looks like yellow on screen on Amazon, when it arrives is oftentimes very orange or some other weird variation of yellow and it doesn't match the set. So anytime you're trying to match a set, definitely go ahead and order four or five different yellow outfits and just know that whatever you don't use, you can always send back. Now the same thing goes for sizing, all right? What China thinks is a large is not exactly a large over here in America. And oftentimes we get burned by that. So again, go ahead and buy those four outfits in two different sizes and hopefully something you ordered will work. Now pro tip, do not wait till the very last minute. Go ahead and give yourself a couple of weeks to go ahead and get the right thing because if you have to send them back and order new ones, well, you need that time to know that it's gonna be there in time for your shoot. All right, now it's time to go ahead and talk about my favorite part, which is lighting. I'm kind of a lighting geek. Today, we're gonna go ahead and light the set with a couple of Godox AD600s or Flashpoint Evolved 600s. And one of them is in the right back corner with a five foot softbox on it. And the other one is gonna be in the left front corner with a seven foot Octobox on it. Now, part of the equipment that we are testing today is the seven foot modifier. And we wanted a modifier that would put out an entire giant wall of light so that you really couldn't miss and the shadows just would almost not be present if we didn't want them there. And that's exactly what you get when you use a seven foot modifier like this giant softbox. This thing is massive. Once again, it's time to geek out, but this time we get to geek out about camera gear. Now, today we're using the Sony a7 III, which is an absolute game changer of a camera, and that is because 100% of the eye autofocus. Now, the lenses we're using for today's shoot are the Tamron 28-75 2.8, the Sony G Master 70-200 2.8, and the Sigma Art 50mm 1.4. As I mentioned before, some things did go sideways, and because of that, we had to bring in some additional gear. We had to bring in my Canon 5D Mark III and a Canon 85mm lens, which is my backup camera rig in case my main camera goes down, which it absolutely did today. Now, as the old saying goes, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. And today we had a bit of a problem with the cake, which is another reason why I'm glad that today was not a paying client. We were doing a test shoot, because when we ordered the cake, there was a bit of a miscommunication between my studio and their, uh, well, their cake shop. And we said we wanted an eight inch cake, you know, something small so that the child can smash it. And what they gave us was an eight inch cake vertically. And it turned out to be more like a nine inch cake. Now, when you start stacking a cake that high, guess what you have to put in the middle? Pokey wooden dowels, which to me is an absolute smash cake no-no. I do not want my little ones poking their eyes out on sticks that exist in the cake when they go face first in it. So I never, ever, ever allowed uh, wooden dowels in my cakes. I absolutely won't work with a vendor that insists on using them. And the reason the vendor put them in there was again, the cake was nine inches, about nine inches tall, and the whole thing would have just slid right over. So I completely understand. And I also understand that the miscommunication was, you know, maybe my assistant uh, used the wrong verbiage. I'm not going to point fingers, but 
but that's okay. It's all good because today was, say it with me, it was a test shoot and we don't test on paying clients. I'm gonna keep drilling that in your head. Today on the set, I was testing some more equipment. I was testing some third-party batteries for my Sony a7 III. Well, the charger that came with those batteries, it malfunctioned when charging my main Sony battery, and it didn't charge it. The light was green, it said it was good to go, and I put it in my camera, used it for about five minutes, and that main battery went down. I'm assuming it was because the charger was faulty. So I went ahead and reached for a third party battery that I wanted to test and it was fully charged and it went from 100% down to 0% in less than 10 minutes. Pretty much rendering my Sony a7 III as nothing more than just a giant paperweight. I couldn't use the camera. Yet again, another reason why I'm glad today was not a paying client. Another thing that went wrong was beyond my control. Now I bring in a client, whether they are a model or they are a paying client, I bring them in for a consultation. And in that meeting, of course, we hand them a model release that we expect to have signed. And then on the day of the shoot, they bring it back in. Well, on the day of the shoot, the mom wasn't the one that brought the child in. It was grandma. And of course, grandma didn't have that model release. Now, for those of you who are running a studio right now and you're not using model releases, you are playing a very dangerous game. There are a whole lot of ways that not having a model release can go sideways on you and affect your business and your personal finances. So I absolutely urge you guys to never ever click one frame without a model release. No model release and I don't even take a single picture. We were able to work around it by having mom go ahead and take a picture of that model release with her phone and then email it to us. And that was enough for us to say, yes, we have permission and yes, we can photograph this child. But it did take about 20 to 30 minutes to do that. All the while, of course, the child is getting more and more sleepy. Which leads me to the next problem, the child was sleepy. This child was exhausted. I mean, if you look at these pictures, you can see that this baby was tired. And there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, squeaky toys or bubble guns that was going to help this kid kind of not be tired. I mean, once they, they hit that wall, there really is no bringing them back. So unfortunately, when the child did start crying and there was no stopping it, rather than stressing out that child and really just kind of, you know, hurting her emotionally, we went ahead and called time of death on the shoot and we simply brought in a, what I call the backup baby. Now, anytime we do these kinds of model shoots or when we're testing equipment, we always have a baby on backup because these kind of things do happen. So it is safe to say that we had our fair share of obstacles on today's shoot, but yet we were able to overcome. And the way that we did that was by simply having a backup plan and we just kept shooting. And that's the advice I wanna leave you guys with today is to always have a backup plan and always just keep shooting and everything will be just fine. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at the images that we were able to create on today's cursed yet beautiful set. I really want to thank you guys for watching today's video and I hope that you guys got something out of my misery. Everything went wrong and I really hope that you guys had some takeaways. And if you did, definitely consider subscribing. And if you want more videos like the one you just watched, well, there's gonna be a whole mess popping up over there, which is Texan for two. So have a great day, you guys. I'm Daniel Troutman with the smashcake.com and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.